In the chaos that gripped Berlin at the end of April 1945, as the Soviet Red Army pushed closer towards the Führerbunker, Hitler's underground hideout, there was a huge amount of slaughter and assault inside of the city. But there was one man who was described as the most disgusting person within Adolf Hitler's inner circle, who was led out to the Garden of the Reich Chancery, and was then executed by gunshot. Hermann Fagelein was also the brother-in-law of Ava Braun, Hitler's ill-fated girlfriend and wife, and he was a man whose marriage Hitler attended, and the dictator even hosted the proceedings. But Fagelein was a man who was linked to Heinrich Himmler, the head of the SS, and his treachery at the end of the war, crossing the dictator Hitler, but because of this, he was then executed. However, there are many questions regarding Fagelein's execution, including what happened to his body following this, as it has never been found. Join us today as we try to solve this World War II mystery, and as always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Hermann Fagelein had a long career inside the German armed forces and the military, and he also joined the Nazi party and the SS. His father had done a deal with the SS to allow them to use the Family Horse Riding Institute for cavalry training, and Fagelein then joined the group on the 10th of April 1933. He then even tried to participate in the Olympics to represent Nazi Germany in horse riding events, but when the Second World War broke out with Hitler's invasion of Poland, his dreams shifted significantly. Fagelein was given charge of the SS's Death Heads Horse Regiment, a cavalry group that split up to serve the police, and Himmler then ordered larger recruitment drives for the group. But Fagelein became a horrific war criminal, and he was involved in the executions of Polish civilians following the invasion of Poland, and in one war crime his forces shot 1,700 people whilst concealed within a forest. But as the Second World War raged on, Fagelein's troops suffered from shortages of ammunition and supplies, and he was brought in front of a court-martial, as he was suspected of stealing items and looting. This was not simple shoplifting, as a lorry was located with two Mercedes cars in the back and huge sums of coffee and tea, as well as other luxury items including chocolate. But Heinrich Himmler, his close friend, stepped in to stop this going much further, but some of his associates, including Reinhard Heydrich, the butcher of Prague, tried to investigate Heimann Fagelein, but every time anything was levelled against him, or every time accusations flew, Fagelein had Himmler backing him up. But as the war continued, Fagelein remained on the front lines, executing civilians and destroying settlements, and there were some reports of his forces stealing from civilians, and killing without being given specific orders to do this, therefore massacring in cold blood. The group were then sent to the Soviet Union, where the cavalry detachment were involved in Operation Barbarossa, and they continued to round up victims who would be executed by Fagelein's forces. In August 1941, 14,000 Jews were executed, along with 3,500 others in one mass killing. It was clear that Hermann Fagelein was a man who was happy to carry out the executions for the Nazis and the SS, and he was a man who had little feeling towards his victims. He was responsible for the executions of thousands, but he was injured by a Red Army sniper, and was then wounded again, which seemed to take him out of the conflict, and away from the Soviet Union. Because of his close friendship with the head of the SS, Fagelein secured a role as an adjutant to Heinrich Himmler, and an SS liaison officer to Hitler for Himmler. This meant that he was now Himmler's mouthpiece in meetings with Adolf Hitler. Fagelein was described as being very popular with the women, who had women flocking around him. He was a frank and honest person. No sooner had he appeared than he was sitting with us at the table in the Berghof. Those who were not his friends were his enemies until he was firmly in the saddle. He was clever but ruthless. Many inside of Hitler's inner circle almost idolised him due to what he had done during the war and some treated him as a hero, but Fagelein was a man who was obsessed with progression and power, and he wanted riches and influence even inside of Hitler's court. But one person who did seem to enjoy spending time with Hermann Fagelein was Hitler's girlfriend and later wife, Ava Braun, who was believed found him attractive. Fagelein, though, would marry Ava's sister, Gretel, and many historians have considered that this was more of a political power play rather than a romantic gesture. The marriage occurred at the Berghof and the Eagle's Nest on the 3rd of June 1944, inside of Hitler's mountainous secluded accommodation, and Hitler, Martin Bormann and Himmler acted as witnesses. It was a huge Nazi celebration, 
by marrying Gretel, it could be considered that Fagelein was now the brother-in-law of Adolf Hitler, and he was certainly the brother-in-law of Ava Brown. But Hitler himself was unsure about him, and he was inside the room in the wolf's lair when a suitcase bomb detonated on the 20th of July 1944. He was wounded in the leg and was asked to try and investigate what had happened, and it was stated that Fagelein was personally indignant to think of anyone wanting to blow up such a splendid fellow as himself. He thought that was more criminal than any plan to get rid of Hitler. Fagelein once the plot had been discovered and the executions of the plotters taken place, would show photographs of the hanged men around the inner circle. However, in 1945, there were many members of the SS and Hitler's inner circle who knew that the war was only going towards a German defeat. As the Western Allies were pushing in from France, and the Soviet Red Army were rampaging towards Germany. With this, Hitler remained inside his underground complex of Führerbunker in Berlin, and it was here where he eventually died next to his wife Ava Brown in his study. But Berlin suffered much heavy bombing and artillery attack, and on the 21st of April 1945, the Soviet Red Army tanks got to the outskirts of Berlin. Hermann Fagelein knew that this would only end one way, and he decided to make a run for it. He asked for two vehicles for reconnaissance purposes, and a chauffeur would bring key documents between him and Fagelein. But 30 minutes after the vehicles left the Führer bunker containing Fagelein, they arrived back at the bunker, and Fagelein had ditched them in the region of Kurfürstendamm in Berlin. Hitler interpreted this act as one of desertion, and he ordered Fagelein to be arrested. He wanted to try and make a break for it, but was then found inside of his Berlin apartment in civilian clothing and preparing to try and get to Sweden or Switzerland. He had with him jewellery, cash and documents, including information about Himmler's attempts to broker peace with the Western Allies. It was said that when Fagelheim was seized, he was incredibly drunk, and it was hours later that Hitler found that Himmler was trying to subvert him to end the hostilities, and with this he thought Fagelheim knew about what he was doing. Fagelein was then ordered to be interrogated and he was stripped of all his ranks and party offices and he was then court-martialed. He was so drunk though during the proceedings that he even urinated on the floor and he could hardly stand up when he tried to talk, only vomit seemed to come from his mouth. But Hitler had enough and Fagelein was then ordered to be shot. Ava Brown asked Hitler to spare him as his wife was pregnant at the time and Hitler refused any mercy and he saw his actions as desertion, and deserving of execution. On the evening of the 28th of April 1945, Hermann Fagelein was dragged out of Hitler's bunker by a number of men, where the interrogation had been occurring, and he was still blind drunk. He was taken into the garden of the Reich Chancery, which had been hit by many Soviet shells and pieces of artillery, and there were a number of craters. Fagelein was then lined up in the garden to face a firing squad, one account of his execution in the film Downfall shows him giving the Hitler salute before a single machine gunner fires into him. But during this part of the Second World War, it would have been very tricky for Hitler to find a firing squad to perform the job, such was the chaos in the city and the shortage of men, so it's believed that one single executioner, possibly a member of the Führerbunker staff, or an SD officer, shot Fagelein. It was described that he was shot like a dog inside of the right chancery garden. However, what would happen to his body? At this time inside the right chancery garden, images show that there was little grass, and most of the trees had been blown up, and in fact most of the place was in ruin, and there was debris everywhere. There were also many craters caused by explosives and artillery that had been fired from the Soviets. It was inside one of these, where the bodies of Hitler and Ava Brown were later burned, following their deaths inside of the underground bunker, but was Hermann Fagelein buried in one of these craters? This is one of the most probable outcomes, that following being shot and executed by a member of the SD, his body was thrown into one of the bomb craters. As there were bombs being dropped all around the city, the body of Fagelein may have not been covered up, just left in a shell hole in the ground. But there are other accounts regarding this. One is that a Red Army enlisted soldier came across Fagelein's body in the right chancery garden, and he then buried him in a makeshift grave. As Berlin fell, there were lots of bodies around the area of the Reich Chancery. Some of these were civilians, some were soldiers, 
and many were placed near to a damaged water tower that fell to the ground, and some were left where they died. But Fagelein's body could then have been moved to be buried inside of a mass grave. The famous female pilot, Hannah Reich, stated that Fagelein was shot, and that his body was hastily buried, then removed to a mass grave, meaning that the brother-in-law of Hitler today is still buried possibly in an unmarked grave. But there were other theories as to what happened to the body of Hermann Fagelein. One of these comes directly from his father, who even shockingly claimed that after the war, that his son was still alive, and that he received a number of packages containing money, that he also got notes saying his son was alive, but was choosing to remain in the shadows, knowing he'd most certainly be executed for war crimes. Some amateur historians have debated whether Fagelein did escape the bunker, that he may have made a deal with Gestapo chief Heinrich Muller. It was Johann Rattenhuber who had tried Fagelein, but Rattenhuber, an SS general and the head of Hitler's Reich Security Service, had been tasked with confirming Fagelein's death. Did Rattenhuber confirm the death to Hitler so that Adolf Hitler could then be free to marry his girlfriend Ava Braun without Fagelein becoming a living relative? The body Rattenhuber may have witnessed, some have questioned whether this may have even been a double. But another belief put forward by James P. O'Donnell, an American journalist who visited the Führer bunker, was that Fagelein was not shot, however he was instead executed by hanging inside of a Gestapo cellar. If this would have happened, his uniform would have been removed, as was custom, and his remains, if discovered by the Soviets, would have shown nothing to highlight who he truly was. It was stated that during the court-martial proceedings that Fagelein was in his uniform, but there are some different versions as to what occurred to his body. The most likely and accepted theory is that Hermann Fagelein's corpse was thrown into a bomb crater and then left. He would have been stripped of his uniform before his execution, and his SS insignia and anything else outlining his rank and identity was removed, as he was seen as a disgraceful deserter. With this, his nameless corpse would have been lying inside the right chancery garden, and as further artillery fell, it could have been further damaged and covered up by rubble. When the Soviets found the alleged remains of Hitler and Ava Braun, there were no accounts of the remains of Fagelein being found. They documented the remains of Joseph Goebbels and his wife and their discovery, but with this we must presume that if they came across Fagelein's remains, they treated them like a German soldier or civilian, and that he was then moved to a mass grave or was interred inside of a war cemetery. This means today that his remains would be buried inside of a cemetery without any marking. We must consider also that other high-ranking Nazis and members of Hitler's government were too buried in mass graves and their fates remained unknown for many decades, for example Martin Bormann, Hitler's private secretary. Many theorise that he escaped the ruined city and that he fled to South America, but the reality was a lot closer to home, and specifically Berlin, as his remains were found in the city near to the Lerter station in West Berlin. These remains of Bormann were conclusively identified by genetic testing, and they lay inside of a grave in Berlin for decades undetected. Is this the same fate that also met Hermann Fagelein? It's unlikely we'll ever know for sure what happened to his body. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.